My name is Chris Haywood and this is Team vs Wild. In this episode I will be demonstrating how to survive in Australia's Black Hill Forest. Honey, one of the wild's best energy sources. It's full of packed with carbohydrates and sugars, and it'll keep you running for ages. It's um, very common and it's readily accessible um, with a little bit of effort. One of the easiest way to get rid of bees is smoke them out. And what they'll do is collect all the honey and try to leave the hive. There's a giant clump of bees. Do you want to get a close up on that, mate? Both bees and honey are an excellent source of protein and carbohydrates and sugars. In a survival situation, Finding a beehive can be a great booster. Never, as a good general rule of thumb, never use more energy than what you will get back. Depends how far you're prepared to go to stay alive. So we found a mine and mines are a great source of fresh water and food, also shelter if needed. Um, so to be able to find our way through the mine we need a natural torch and one of the easiest way to make it is just get some um, sort of thin bark like this, it's quite pliable so I can curl this around and um, this will be the outer bit of our torch. Alright, so to make a natural torch, you need the bark that we got before, some nice tinder to start the fire, and something to burn a bit more, um, longer. Eucalyptus leaves are really good, whether they're dead or alive, because they contain a flammable oil. So what we're going to do, is we're going to put a bit of that on top, right? That'll be great for starting the fire. Now we're just going to get a bunch of the eucalyptus leaves, scrunch them in a ball, and that will be the burn layer. And we don't need it to burn too long, just enough to sort of lead our way down the mine and hopefully find some bush tucker and a good source of fresh water. Alrighty, so we're in the entrance of the mine, it goes a fair way down, and um, basically you've got to be really careful, because some of these old mines can be really unstable, so um, they can also have a methane build up, so you want to be careful with the fire. So we've built the torch now, and it's quite a big one, but it should last us quite some time. So now we're just going to sort of light it. Alright, we have fire. Okay, so now you've got the torch started. It's not particularly bright, but it'll get brighter as it burns down. And um, now basically you just want to head down and that'll shine your way. Alright, let's go. So basically, most of these old mines, they start off narrow, but um, they'll get a bit wider and taller. And 
basically when you got the torch on you want to stay low because all the smoke from the torch will rise to the top and you'll end up getting um, your smoke inhalation so if you start feeling dizzy or if you're breathing in a lot of smoke get down low and go 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 right. so this torch is actually working quite nicely now and um, it's lighting the way and if you look on the roofs and um, on the walls you should actually find some cave crickets which are a very good source of pro- ah. if you come here see that? it's a cave cricket can the camera pick it up alright? And uh, if you just grab them, oh shit, grab the other one. And these guys are an excellent source of protein. Stick the lamp on now. A bit higher. Oops, yeah, beauty. Alright, and these guys are an excellent source of protein. Just actually cook them a bit. And they. Marvellous. Alright, let's keep moving. Now, all these roots hanging down, they've actually got drops on them, and this is fresh water, it's been seeping through the rocks, and you could just sort of suck it up. Water is the most important thing in any situation. You need to be creative in the ways you obtain enough fluids. Now, when you've got a cliff face like this to rappel down, there's no other possible way of getting down it and you've only got one rope the easiest way to use a full body technique it involves putting the rope through your legs around your right thigh across your body and over the opposite shoulder so the leg it's around and um, that way you can full on put weight on it and it'll be, it'll be pretty much all good it'll hold you and basically, once you begin, you're committed, so there's no going back. Now, this isn't actually the best rock face to be repelling down because it's so slippery. One false move could result in broken bones or even worse death. And in a survival situation, if you fall, you break your back, your leg, you're basically as good as dead. And when the substrate you're climbing on it's so loose. When repelling down a cliff like this you with loose debris, you have to be extremely careful to protect your head. If you get a little bit of substrate hit your head, you can become unconscious. Becoming unconscious in these sorts of conditions can result in a fall, resulting in broken bones or possibly death. Whenever you're repelling, if possible, it is always a good idea to plan your route and assess what obstacles there are. If you become rim rocked, which is when you get stuck, you can neither go up or down. It is always extremely important that you be very creative in the way you get out of the situation. So, um, pound for pound, insects and invertebrate contain more protein than red meat. And um, the cameraman has just come across a dragonfly. 
Bugs and insects are an excellent food source. Readily available, they are found in almost every environment. Oh, tastes super crunchy and the bottom tastes like thick pussy custard. Now, if you can catch them, locusts make a really a very good source of protein. Um, if you can catch them and keep them, and um, yeah. Just be sure to remove the legs. You can still eat them separately, but I don't go down too well. Remove the head and also the wings. Now, if you've ever seen a bird eat a locust or cricket, you'll notice that most of the time they leave the wings. And that's what's left. This, to me, is lunch. Still gripping onto my hand. I don't know, I remove those legs as well. It's not going to go down too well. <laughs> Ugh. Very chewy. Alright, so we've managed to find a crane fly colony. Um, they tend to hang around in the same area, usually when it's wet, they hang around under logs and stuff. Um, so these guys, once again, are full of protein and carbohydrates. And they're all in the same spot, so you can pretty much just grab a bundle of them. <coughs> as long as they don't um, <laughs> all go in the same spot. So there's literally hundreds of the things down here. Oh. And um, once you've got them, you can mush them all up into a ball. Gotta get out of here. Attacking me. And um, some bark in there as well. So you can pretty much just mush them into a ball like that. Just that little ball of crane flies, it's going to be a really good energy boost. <laughs> Not the nicest tasting thing ever. When jumping into unknown waters, it is always a good idea to, where possible, check the waters first. Either by spearing in a blunt spear to test the water, or simply assessing it from above. When you're sliding down a um, steep bit like this, a steep hill like this, you always want to be careful of all this loose stuff, you know, you falling down behind you. Always want to try to protect your head and stay, stay as low to the um, as low to the ground as you can.